How many would like to go on a trip? Are you ready to leave? Let's leave right now. Let's go in our mind's eyes on a wonderful vacation experience to the Rocky Mountains. I'd like for you to picture all those gorgeous mountain peaks standing up against the blue sky with clear sunlight coming through, the wonderful green forests gathering all around, and with them the beautiful clear waters of babbling brooks and all the water rushing through. You know, a beautiful place that we just pictured in our minds. And to be there is a wonderful experience. I want to share with you that these beautiful springs that we've just pictured, these bubbling fountains from the inner uh, workings of the soil or the earth coming, rising up, are real fa beautiful fountains that nurture and take care of all of nature. These beautiful springs, as gorgeous as they are, each one can be different. They're unique in their own aspects. Yet some of them, those springs bubbling up, those wonderful fountains, may have a little bit more water than others. Some may flow a little faster than others. And how wonderful it is as these mountain streams come down into the valleys, nurturing and taking care of nature, providing nourishment, providing that which is necessary for growth and development. Here's the beautiful thing. This spiritual lesson that we've read today is embodied in that vacation picture that you've just taken. That wonderful experience you said of journeying to the Rockies and experiencing a spring of water, a fountain of life coming up from the earth, coming from one place. Though diverse, every one of those fountains, every one of those water sources comes from the same place. It comes from within. It comes from within the earth. All coming from the same place, yet unique, yet different in so many oh, wonderful ways and so many different aspects. But there is only one source, and that source flows through them. Today's scripture text says, Don't you believe that I and the Father are one, or that the Father is in me? And that the words I speak are not my own, but the Father who lives in me works through me. Beautiful analogy as we think of the fountain in us working through us flowing through our lives in all aspects. For today's spiritual lesson then is about each one of us being a fountain of life. That there is a God pressure behind us, a God pressure in the back of each and every one of us that's within our DNA. For we understand truly we're created in the image and likeness of the divine. We can't emphasize that enough. If you could grasp one passage from Scripture and it would be the unfolding of all the others in truth and understanding, it's this. You are the likeness. You are the image. You are the revelation of God. That likeness is ever expanding and ever growing around us. It's ever erupting with goodness flowing through our lives. It's seen as we look at nature where a blade of grass can multiply and become two. That nature itself is growing. I'd like to think in my yard, it's more like that blade of weeds is multiplying in two or three or four or five or six. And it's ever showing to us that, yes, nature is expanding. Nature is growing. And the very nature of God is expansion, growth. So there's a life force coming within us. It is the divine that is working within us, ever wanting to expand, ever wanting to erupt, ever wanting to flow out from our lives. There is a divine power within each and every one of us. This life source is seeking an outlet. It wants to flow through you right now. Can you imagine? Pause for a moment and think about that. A power flowing through your life right now. That's true. That's every breath you take. Every day that you awaken, you awaken to this understanding that there is a divine power, a divine source, a fountain that's flowing within you, and you are this fountain of life. Jesus sharing this, these powerful words, he said, I of myself can do nothing. Yet we looked at Jesus and what do we learn? He did amazing things. How can he say he of himself can do nothing? Ah, he adds into this beautiful text that you read today, the ancient truth. I and the Father are one. God within me, there is no separation. We are one. There's this oneness, God living in me, and I am living as the revelation of God. I am living as the divine image. In all these ways, what's happening is that it is the Father, it is the source, it is the wellspring that speaks and works through me. It is the Father that dwelleth in me that does this great work. 
John chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus echoed again, I can do nothing of my own accord. And how many of us can say that? We sometimes have felt like we can do nothing of our own accord. That's right, we are struggling with it. We're saying in life it seems so difficult, but yet there's a power within us. John 14, 10, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? That, don't you believe that the source of God, the very essence, all that is the goodness of God is in me and it's working through me. And what you're hearing and experiencing is the unfolding of the divine, unfolding of God within us. This incredible spring then acts like a fountain that can do amazing things within us. And we too can realize that we are able and able to do amazing things as we allow it to flow in our hearts and our lives. There is something powerful behind all this flow. This is this God force, this force of good. And I want you to embrace that in thought and mind right now. There is a force of good working in me, a force of greatness, a force of power, a force of strength, a force of healing, a force of direction, a force of guidance, and it's at work within my life. It has ever been there, but quite often we forget, forget or fail to recognize this power within. And so that's why we fall so easily into language that says, I can't, this won't happen, it's not there for me. We simply fall into these patterns of limitations because we look to the idea that the strength that we have is just ours. But the strength that you have is far greater. It is God's strength within you. God's strength, God's power, God's wisdom, God's knowledge, all unfolding within your heart and your life. Let's just say for a moment, we look at those mountain springs and let's personalize them as if they had a voice themselves. It's quite often, if they had the opportunity to speak out in this natural state of limitation, we might hear them saying, I don't know if there's enough water to continue a great flow. I don't know if I can continue flowing and bubbling up. I feel limited. Another spring might say, I'm not sure there's enough pressure here to keep it flowing, to keep the water moving. Another spring might say, uh, I'm afraid to allow this. Uh, uh, this whole thing about flow, it's very scary. So another spring might say, I'm jealous. Look at this one. There's such wonderful flow. So much water coming out of this source I'm jealous of it. Well, we look at humanizing these simple mountain springs, yet they are our story too. So often we find ourselves with a limited focus, an idea that says, you know, it's scary to believe that there's a power within us. It's kind of frightening to think that there's something beyond what I know and I can do as a human. It's sometimes uh, that we look at great things happening in someone else and then we become jealous well, how come great manifestations are happening in your life? And I become jealous, and so we want to shut down this awareness of a divine source within our whole lives. But these kind of mental attitudes rise up, and we forget that this good is within us and behind us. It's our divine source. But when we think this way, what happens is we stop the divine flow within our lives. And that flow stops when uh, we think it's always... It's got to be something that God's doing. That's why it's stopping. There's some hindrance. Quite often, that's so true. People say, you know what? I've been praying for a long time and I didn't see an answer to my prayer. Must be that God doesn't care. So we think it's God's fault. Or God doesn't uh, want me to have this. God's not listening to me. Oh, that's a big one because I quite often find people calling me and said, Pastor, would you pray? Because I don't know that I have the great access to heaven that you do. Oh, but we all have the same access equally. But some people say, I've just been praying and praying and praying, but you know, it doesn't seem like God's listening to me at all. Or they're saying, I feel that God wants to withhold this from me. Or it's not God's will. Big famous lines that people often say, you know what, the reason I didn't get that job or didn't have this blessing is God's withholding something. God's punishing me. God's wanting me to suffer. Or there's some difficult challenge or thing I need to work through in my life. And so we constantly want to blame God or put it on God. And all along, that divine flow is consistent. But if there's a restriction to the divine flow, it's us, our thoughts, our ideas our beliefs, 
For each one of us is an inlet to the divine. That's right. Inlet. The divine is flowing in. In us. This beautiful analogy we, uh, in my class on Thursday, I just drew a gigantic circle and said, this is God. The whole universe. And this small circle in it, that's you, inside, enveloped, surrounded by, enfolded in this wonderful goodness all around you. Yet even the circumference of the circle would suggest some limitation. So I have to erase the circumference of the circle and say, everything is God. And you're in it. And God is in you. Wow. What a revelation. If we could understand that, we would understand so much of the blessings that are, God intends for us are waiting. They're ready for us. The hesitancy is our thoughts, our ideas, our beliefs, our suggestions of limitation, our ideas and our fears that hold us back. We're born with this natural desire to express good. That's right. Yet all through the journey of life, we're taught all these things that are negative. We didn't arrive as a little baby born into a world full of all kinds of negative ideas. We didn't buy, arrive in the world cursing our mother for this birth experience. We didn't arrive in this world wanting to say, this is a terrible place. How come I arrived here? This is a terrible time to be living in. No, all this negativity, we're taught. For that newborn child has a spirit of wanting to express the divine. It comes into this world with all good and the feelings of all good. It's only through the journey of experiences that it's taught the negativity or the limitations or the fears that we somehow embrace. So quite often we have to unlearn the things that we've learned. We have to release and let go. We have to re-educate our own journey of our lives. You see, Jesus was so good at this as a great example. For one of the things that he always did was to clear his mind to sort of be in that place where he's those thoughts of limitation, fear, lack, separation, any of those kind of thoughts being totally removed. We find all through the New Testament, the stories of Jesus slipping away were times of prayer, going to a mountaintop or being alone in those times to kind of get that clarity, to clear out everything uh, within that say that at all times, I want to make sure there's a divine flow, the God in me flowing liberally freely, without any restrictions whatsoever. If we unstop the flow, incredible things are there to happen within our lives. For the flow does not stop itself. It's just something gets in the way. It's not God withholding. There is not a passage where it suggests that the very character and nature of God is, I want to withhold and want you to beg. I want you to plead. I want you to insist. I want you to grovel. Could you roll on the floor and, and kick and scream a little bit more? Could you shake a tambourine louder? Could you do something more to get my attention? That's not the consciousness of God at all. But generously, liberally, freely, abundantly sharing blessings in our lives. So if we look at our life as this, as, as this being of a divine flow, sort of like a pipeline of the goodness of God flowing in and out, one of the things we've got to do is make sure our pipe is clear. Clear out the pipe. Clear out the mind. Clear out the thoughts. This past week, I had my septic tank cleared out. Not exactly the most exciting experience in your life, but for us, we were thrilled, you know. I had never experienced a septic tank. We just moved to a home about a year and a half ago, and septic tank life was a whole new journey as neighbors began to tell all their horror stories of, oh, mine overflowed. Oh, mine backed up. There's not enough bleach in the state of Georgia to clean your house after this happens. And all oh, the nightmare stories, and you know, oh, we have to have ours cleaned all the time, and we need to get that septic tank cleared out so that there's really good flow and Robert and I began to say well we bought the house but do we ever remember that the former owner mentioning he emptied the septic tank hmm he couldn't recall the former owner couldn't recall ever emptying the septic tank and I began to think whoa 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 and the other said oh don't worry about it don't worry about it. Septic tanks are natural. They'll take care of themselves. I've never had mine in the 30 years I've lived here cleaned out. Others say, whoa, I have to have mine cleaned out every four years. On with the stories. And you know, we began to sit down and say, wait a minute. For peace of mind, let's clean that septic tank out. 
I'm going to tell you this. What a wonderful spiritual experience it was to see that septic tank cleaned up. They came, they dug it up, they opened it all up, they came and sucked it all out, cleaned up that thing and told us, you know, you were this far away from a septic tank backup. Thank you, God, for the wisdom of God. Uh-huh. Yes. How wonderful to know that you've got to keep that pipe cleaning uh, going on. You've got to keep that pipe clear and that flow going. So it might be that you have to remove some crap uh, uh, in our lives. We've got to get rid of some of the stuff that we've been holding on a little bit live in an analogy to keep the things flowing clearly within our life. So clear your mind. I'm going to ask you this question then. How much time do you spend clearing your mind? How much time do you spend releasing? Because I'm going to tell you this, in the journey of your life, there's going to be all this stuff bombarding you with negativity, with telling you of separation and lack, all kinds of things that are telling you how terrible your world is. And oh, my Lord, could we go on just spend a day watching CNN or Fox News? You would find, oh, my Lord, what have you fed into your thought process as you welcome this stuff? I'm asking you now, how much time do you spend clearing your mind? Jesus slipped away, found times appropriate to get away, to pull away from the crowd. Is our great example telling us the same. Have you slipped away for the sole purpose of clearing your thoughts of negative energy, never negative beliefs, negative concepts? Oh, the great hymn of the church was sung in the Broadway show Frozen. Let it go, let it go. You know, how important it is that we think of that. That's the great hymn of the church. We all should be singing over and over again, uh, joining in that principle of letting things go that are coming to us and allow them just to flow through us, beyond us, releasing thoughts, not entertaining them, not welcoming them. I want to tell you this, that one of the great ways of clearing your mind is to be with people of like mind. Likes attract likes. You know, and you look around and you say, who are you hanging out with? Reverend Troy Perry used to always say, you know, birds of a feather flock together. The real question is, who are you flocking with? You know, who are you flocking with? You know, asking as you look around and we think about our journey of our life, who is flocking with us that says this is exactly who I am in thought, in consciousness, in belief? So we may have to take some moments to say, where do I find people of like mind? Well, hello, look around this room. Here's a room full of people of like mind, like consciousness, like ways of thinking. We are all here for the purpose of elevating, lifting up, and encouraging. We want to grow spiritually. We want to move to higher planes. Our whole thought is not, how can I live more negatively? How can I see more destruction in my life? How can I embrace more limitation? We've come here to lift one another. We embrace one another. We hug one another. We shake hands. We greet one another. We share a co conversation over coffee before church and after church. And we have all these wonderful social activities. The purpose is uplifting, encouraging. And how important that is for our lives that you have embraced the journey of people of like mind, like thinking surrounding you. That the conversations that you share say, echo, these are my beliefs. And I do believe that the power of God's at work in me. I do believe that there is a fountain flowing through me. I do believe that there's more than I can accomplish for. It's not me alone. It's the works of God, the Father, the source, the divine essence within me, working through me and flowing through me. We've got to make sure that we feed our mind the goodness of God. Some of you have starved your brain to death. We've starved our brain from the feeding, the nurturing, the strengthening of the goodness of God. We've just been on that sort of diet that, you know, it's Weight Watchers for God. I guess we're losing away our, old, our consciousness by not feeding and nurturing and strengthening it. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. That bread being that which sustains or nurtures Jesus is saying the very truth and teaching that I provide for you is that which will sustain you, nurture you, feed your mind. How important it is that we feed our mind on the very truth of God, the goodness of God, and enjoy the buffet of all these wonderful thoughts of blessings that we can feed upon, that we pour into our thought process. I want to encourage you that the other way that we can keep that flow going is that 
we live as though love was our reality. Love is our reality. That every day we walk around and say, today I woke up in love. I woke up to love. I woke up to be love. I am love. And love is my reality. Everything is love. It is one of these wonderful high vibrations as we experience the vibrations of these singing bowls vibrating out, impacting our lives. So it is the vibration of the energy of love that we share with one another. And that when we start creating love and sharing love and living from love and say, this is my reality, well, we're open then to the goodness of God. We're open to it. The pipeline is clear and flowing through. Next thing I want to suggest to you is maybe one of our most challenging to keep that pipeline going, that divine flow going through you. I want to encourage you to do this. Bless the world around you versus curse it. That's right. Everywhere you go, bless it. That means when you're driving down the road and that person cuts you off on the freeway, you bless them. Not in that one-fingered blessing. I'm not talking about that, uh, whichever finger that is that you want to find appropriate. But uh, it's... Uh, that blessing that says, bless that person. Spirit of God, be with them. Let divine presence lead and guide them. They may be panicking or late for work or stressed. I bless them. Everywhere you go, whisper those words of blessing upon others and upon the people that you encounter. Everywhere you go, begin to bless them because what you're doing is offering the highest and best as your desire for their life. And when we do, when you encounter even those who may be in opposition to you, uh, you may perceive them as to be an enemy or to be at odds with you. But instead, your energy is, I bless you. I bless you. I want to see your highest and best unfold. I don't care what you may have said or done because that's what's going on in your life. And I don't take it personally. It's about you. So I bless you so that healing may unfold in you. Wow, it helps to keep our pipeline clear for the divine power and presence to flow through us. One of the things that we learn as we go to that mountaintop experience, this little vacation trip that we're on, as we visualize these rocky mountains, what is it that at the very top, the high levels, the mountain waters are pouring down? And the ancient Romans learned that as long as they could keep an aqueduct or a pathway clear, that water could flow long distances and they could bring waters to all kinds of places as long as the aqueduct never rose high higher than the initial source. How important it is, as we understand the divine source that's flowing through us is the divine power and presence of God. And we never let our ego rise higher than the divine presence, but allow that divine presence then to simply flow down. There's a natural gravitational flow for water to flow from a high point to its lowest point. And it moves down in a flowing and free way. So it is that the spirit and presence of God will flow in and through us as long as we don't, in ego and self-centeredness, try to rise above that, that place of goodness. When we let God, the good, have its own way, everything works out right. I want to tell you this. The secret to your great success on a day-to-day -day journey of how do I make it a perfect day? We let God, the power within, have its own way, liberty and freedom given to this divine power and presence. Giving it and offering it, saying, I step aside the humanness of me. I step aside and allow the divinity within me to rise forward. I step back and allow that to usher in and make way the, clear, the way clear and smooth because I allow the divine to work and unfold my perfect day. That's right. You could have a perfect day today. You got a perfect day tomorrow. You got a perfect day every day as we shift our way of thinking and our consciousness. And it can help with us that we sort of do this work where we're unclogging the pipes and we're allowing the divine flow in thought and consciousness and awareness of thinking that's clear. It says the power of God is at work within me. I want to encourage you by starting with an affirmation I am the divine flow. I am the fountain of divine flow. Say it with me. I am the fountain of divine flow. What a powerful affirmation. Coming up as we journey towards Miracle Sunday, Easter Sunday. In the next uh, four weeks, we're going to be handing you an affirmation jar. 
These jars, you may be familiar with them over the years gone pa past. Every day you're invited to pull out an affirmation. A wonderful affirming thought or phrase. This year, they're being written by some of our wonderful uh, pastoral leaders in, in the uh, affiliated New Thought Network, and uh, they're sharing with us some affirmations. So you'll pull out, and you'll know that it's attached to uh, Reverend Martha Creek, who was most recently with us, or Reverend Dr. Angelo Pazella, who is our president of the Emerson Theological Institute, and invited to not only read their affirmation, but to pray for that person who authored the affirmation. I want to say this, that this affirmation is so powerful because it starts to set our thought in the right direction. We want to be like Jesus, and that's our heart's desire. That's our inner calling to say, I want to be like the master way shower. I want to be like Jesus, who is my great example. I want to be like Jesus for this world, for here and now. It begins by saying, I am the fountain of divine flow. It is God in me, working through me, around me and always for me key thing in our life is that these kind of affirmations then begin to water the dry places the deserts of our spiritual life we all have those places how many of you say you know there's been times when i felt like i was so alive with god and i was so connected and i so felt i had really great spiritual moments in my life times when i really felt the presence of god and then oh, there's others when i just felt like oh where is God? I feel kind of empty. I feel kind of dry. I'm kind of questioning and wondering. Let me tell you, these affirmations of truth become like water flowing over the desert areas that transform that dry soil into nurturing places of growth and fields of manifestation. We begin to claim and affirm within our lives, I am the divine fountain of flow it is flowing in and through me it is happening all around me this is the very powerful for it's not enough just to know that we are connected to the divine flow but there's something else we're not just an inlet but we're an outlet it's wonderful to say i know the power of god is flowing in me today and that's beautiful that's step one I know it's flowing in me and I feel that presence and I feel that love and I feel that divine energy. I feel that strength. I feel that wisdom. I feel that insight. It's flowing in me. It's in me. Now what are you going to do with it? Ah, we're called to be an outlet. Not just an inlet, but an outlet as well. As we go into the world, this is the whole essence of City of Light, that we might let our light so shine before men and women that they may see our good works and give glory to God. For a city built on a hill cannot be hidden. People who rise to a level of consciousness cannot be hidden because everyone will see the beauty of God unfolding in, through, around, and for them. How important it is that we are embracing this powerful truth in our lives. That not only I am welcoming God in, I am welcoming God out. How important that is. We often say, oh, I want to invite Jesus into my heart. And I want to say, how might we let Jesus out? Because how important that is. We've got to let the power of God. We've got to let the truth out. We've got to let the grace of God. We've got to let the presence, the divine essence of God. How to the world can experience it? Or we hoard it. We keep it to ourselves. You can imagine what our lives would be. How many of you ever encountered a hoarder? Have, a hum? Have you been to the house of a hoarder? How many of you are, are a hoarder? Don't raise your hand. Okay. Little honesty there. But you see, what happens is we take in and we take in and we take in. We have a neighbor who's a hoarder. Going to their house is like, hello, are you in there? I hear your voice. Are you in there? Oh, out, out from beneath the boxes and all the clutter and stuff comes this life force coming. I can see shadows coming through the, to come to the door. Are you, are you alive? Are you okay? Are you, you know, buried amongst all the things, the things that say, I've collected so much, but I'm afraid to let it go. I may need it one day. Okay? After a year, have you, and you haven't used it, honey, it's time to let it go. You know? It's time to use it. It's time to embrace it. You know? How many of you have those friends who've got plastic on their sofas and uh, plastic on the lampshades? You know? They got all this beautiful new furniture. Oh, look at it. It's gorgeous. But don't sit on it. 
don't touch it. Don't use it. You know, we don't want it, we don't want it to get dirty. We don't want anybody to, uh, you know, mess it up because it's there. And it's more there for show than to be used. It's time to take the plastic off the furniture of our spiritual lives. You have the power and presence of God within. But use it. Use it. Be an outlet. Share that power and presence. When's the last time that you could walk up to someone and say, I want to pray for you right now because my faith is so strong. I believe in the miraculous for you. Because the power of God's there for you. You could do it. You can use it. If you share that, what happens is then we become those kind of people that have releasing things to make room for more. My neighbor who's the hoarder, there is not another space in that house that they could take in one more box or one more item. I know they will find it, but I can't believe that there is a space in there and yet they could still live in the house. It's that full of stuff. Stuff that they've hoarded for years. And I want to say this, for years, the power of God has been in you, through you, waiting to be used, manifested. It's time for us to wake up that we are there to use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Believe for something amazing this week. Step out and believe for something powerful. Step out and utilize your faith. I'm going to say something really simple for everyone. How about we all believe for some unexpected income? Okay? In other words, unexpected income coming our way. That's right. We're going to believe for it. Why? And is that, is that impossible? It's not impossible. You know, because it's coming through unexpected ways. Because that opens the door to all kinds of unlimited sources. Expected ways will say, well, wait a minute. Uh, yes, I'm expecting my paycheck, and it's only going to be this amount mm -hmm. or I'm expecting my social security it'll only be this amount you see because I'm on a fixed income but no one's on a fixed income in God because we believe in the power of unexpected blessings things that we say I don't know where it's coming from but I expect it it's coming in an unexpected way that says I don't know where or how but I believe for the power of the divine and the goodness of God is at work within my life and I can do this. I can believe for it. Why? Because the power and presence of God is there. Jesus said, greater things than I do, so shall you do. I'm asking you, would you be willing to do greater things than Jesus? For he's asked and expected the same of you. If you take the plastic off your furniture, take the plastic off your lampshade and use it, amazing things are there to uh, awaiting us and waiting for us. So today, I want to invite you to embrace this very teaching of Jesus. The power and presence of God is working in you, through you, around you, and for you right now. You are a fountain. You are the source, uh, the, the life spring, shall we say, for the source to unfold, for it to flow in, through, around, and most importantly, out. Amen.